It's also important in Physics SL to talk about forces and Newton's laws. The very first thing I want to do with forces is uh, just explain a bit about um, free body diagrams. I think those are a useful way to draw things. So let's say if I have a free body diagram, what I might do then is just draw something or draw a situation where um, I draw what forces are acting on that body. So that could, for example, be me right now. Right now I'm standing on the ground. There are clearly forces acting on me, even though I may not feel it. If I've been on my feet for a long time, clearly my feet will hurt. So this gives me some indication of what's going on. But the force that's always acting on me, first of all, is gravity. And gravity is always acting down. So I'm going to draw a different colored force. So normally we draw the forces going from the um, center of whatever body we're looking at. So this would be the center of mass. In this case I'll label it F with a little subscript G. The G means gravity. Now of course if that was the only force that was acting on me I'd actually be flying downwards. And the fact that I'm not tells me there must be another force. And it turns out there is an upwards force as well. And that's a, what we call a normal force. So we, I'll label it F with a little N. Now at the moment, that normal force going upwards and the downwards force, they're equaling each other out. In other words, they're equal but opposite directions. And as a result, because they balance each other out, then I'll say this, that if F net equals zero, then there's... Um, yeah, no acceleration. This is going to be something important later, so I'm sort of hinting already at some of Newton's laws. But basically what it means is, uh, well I mentioned force and then I mentioned acceleration. I'd better define force a little bit better. Um, force is a, is a push on something. Uh, force is measured in different units, but uh, the most common one is to measure it in Newtons. Okay, that's the unit for force. However, it can also be kilogram meters per second squared. We'll see a little bit later why that is. But as far as forces go, those are really important. Now, what we can do in any situation is draw a free body diagram to figure out where all the different forces are going and what the resultant will be. So in this case right here, when I say a net force, net force implies adding up all the vectors. Okay, so for net force, so F net equals add up all the vectors. So if they all cancel out, I made a really bad A there. So if all the vectors cancel each other out and the net force is zero, uh, then you have no acceleration. And it turns out uh, that's really nice to know about. And it turns out you can, you can figure out what is happening in a situation just based on those forces. So I could do an example, um, there we go. So let's say um, my examples almost always involve some violence of some form on me, it's just because it's more exciting than just a box sitting on a table or something rolling down a hill. So in this case, um, I am attacked by sharks. Actually, I'm gonna be pulled by sharks. Um, what is the resultant force? And a lot of times we're going to mention either resultant or net. Those are going to mean the same thing. I'm just going to try to separate these things just so it's a little bit more clear here. So what is the resultant force? So um, let's say I'm swimming in the water. Maybe I'll get a blue uh, marker here or chalk. So here's some water. And let's say, so here I am. I'm bobbing in the water. I'm not very happy because I'm about to be eaten by sharks. It's maybe not a very nice situation, but uh, I always liked watching Shark Week on TV. So. Uh, of course, sharks don't always attack people, but in this situation, I'm being pulled by sharks. So the question is then, well, what, what are the sharks doing to me? Well, at this point, let's, uh, I'm not going to draw sharks because I'm not a very good artist. 
But uh, what I can show you is um, maybe which way the different directions are going. So let's say uh, one of the sharks is giving me a force of, I don't know, uh, 10 newtons to the right. So I'm going to draw that force. So from the right, I'm going to, so from the center of my mass, I'm going to draw an arrow that is 10 newtons long. I'm going to assume this is east, by the way, or actually I'll just say, uh, yeah, I'll assume that's east. Okay, so that's going to be that way. I drew it exactly 10 newtons long. How do I know how long 10 newtons is? I draw whatever length I want and I label it and now it becomes 10 newtons. So that's one force going to the right. If that was the only force, then this would be a boring question. The resultant force or the net force is just adding up all the vectors. So I'm going to add another shark. Uh, maybe I'll add one that's um, maybe pulling me south at 11 newtons. So I'll make that arrow a little bit longer. Okay, and that one right there will be south. So this is a shark now that's pulling me, let's assume this is sort of um, in three dimensions here. So I guess this is south. That'll be north, east, south, and west. And let's assume that a third shark is pulling on me. Uh, this one, let's say it's um, I don't know, 18 newtons to the west. So I'm going to make it much bigger than my last one. This will be 18 newtons west. The question is then, what's my resultant force? The reason we bother figuring this out is actually because this can tell me about the situation. This can tell me about what's going to happen to me, uh, which way I'm going to go, for example. Because I'm going to be pulled now. I'm being pulled in three directions. So what I need to do then is find the the net force here. Okay, the resultant or net force just means add up all the vectors. Now we add up vectors head to tail and uh, it doesn't matter how I do it but what I can maybe do is start off by simplifying my problem a little bit. See how this east one and this west one are acting opposite to each other? That means then I can just subtract them. So the one that wins is 18 newtons. That's like a pull way more this way than it is that way. So the result of that one, at least, the 18 minus 10 equals 8 newtons. So what this means is I can rewrite this question, which looks complicated. Now I can rewrite it as just this. I have one arrow then going west. That's 8 newtons long. That's because 18 minus 10, the result is only 8 newtons west. So I've only got that. And if I want to add up vectors, this isn't very useful. I need to pick up this vector, so to speak, and move it. So I'm going to move it right here and attach it. So it's like I go left and then I go down. Now I have to go down by 11 newtons. When I say down, that's south. This is west. So then the resultant force is quite simply just what's the start and end and which way do I go. So this direction right here, that's going to be f net. And we've done an example like this before, where what we can do then to find f net, well we know that f net squared equals 8 squared plus 11 squared. Therefore, I can say then that f net is going to be, well it's going to be the square root of uh, what, 64 plus 121. Um, so I'll just figure that out right now, because I need to do the square root of those. And the result is, what, 13.6 approximately. Although um, I only did give um, two digits in my answer, in my questions, so I can probably only say 14 newtons. But the problem is, which direction is this? Where does it go? Well, I know it's sort of, I mean, a lot of people just say southwest. But if it's southwest, that implies it's exactly 45 degrees. It would only be 45 degrees if these two were equal length. If it was like 8 and 8 or 11 and 11, then I could say southwest. But unfortunately, it's not exactly like that, so I need to figure out this angle. The angle between where I started and where I ended up. In other words, I end up over here. I started here and here. So what I can do then is figure out that angle. We did this before. Um, I could say then that, uh, let's see, tangent of theta 
tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be 11 over 8. And then what I can do then is just take the inverse tangent of that, and that'll give me theta. So let me just get out my trusty calculator. And what I'll do is actually calculate it. So 11 divided by 8, and I take the inverse tangent of that answer, and I get an answer of 54 degrees, pretty much 54. So then I can say it's uh, west 54 degrees south, because I go west first, then 54 degrees south, so that could be my answer. Or I could also try to figure out the bearing. Uh, so this right here, by the way, could be my answer, or I could actually figure out the bearing. Now, if I know that this angle right here is 54 degrees, bearings are always done from north and then all the way around. Right? So then what I can do then is calculate then what that has to be. This will be, um, I could say it's, well, there's a number of ways of doing it here, but what I could do is actually say, well, all uh, halfway around, that's 180, and... Um, so what I could do then is say that, well, this little piece right here is going to be 36 degrees, you know, right here. So 180 plus 36 is going to be 216 degrees. So I could also say that it was equal to 14 newtons at a bearing of 216. That's another way of saying it. It doesn't really matter too much how you define the angles. What matters, though, is understanding that we can figure out the result by looking at the net force. In other words, the resultant force. This tells me I'm going to be going that way.